So as I've mentioned quite a few times now, the planet needs more metals and we need these metals in order to, to build the, um, the green technologies of the future that we're all going to rely upon. And the truth is this means we're going to need more mining. But how do we do this responsibly and sustainably? And how do we ensure that we minimize any kind of impact of this mining? And the big part of this is discovery. We need new discoveries of deposits, but what we need are what we can think of as quality resources. We need them to be um, as concentrated as they possibly can be so we can minimize how much we actually have to extract and how much we have to process. Um, so we need to select priority areas um, and that's where geologists like me come in to try and figure out where we're most likely to find the best deposits and where the concentrations are likely to be the highest. Um, and so when we think about a quality resource, we're thinking about things like the metal content. So as I say, the, the higher the concentration, the better. But they need to be of a suitable size and geometry that makes them easier to extract. They need to be sort of suitable for mining and ideally not close to populated areas, away from places that have water resource issues or political conflicts. So you can see that, you know, this is a, a challenge because a lot of these things are going to be constantly changing as well. And environmental concerns. Um, so we need more um, to minimize the environmental impact as much as we possibly can, environmentally benign. We also need to become more efficient about how we recover the metals from these deposits. And I mentioned that the tailings and waste piles early on in their, their life a lot of that copper probably wasn't being extracted very efficiently from the material. And there's probably still quite a lot of copper left in those waste piles. Whereas now we're much more efficient at what we do. And that's all coming from improvements in technology. So something to think about is the term resource frontiers. So when we think about resource frontier, we're thinking about an area um, on the periphery of a country or a region, which is now being opened up for resource extraction. Um, because the older, more accessible um, resource locations have been exhausted. And examples of this are places like Alaska, the Arctic Circle, and the seafloor. So these are controversial. Um, there are huge environmental impacts for extracting in these areas, but we do know there are resources there. And so this is something that we as a society have to grapple with in the future, is how we source the metals that we so badly need for the green energy transition while not impacting these environments that we don't want to, to have detrimental impacts on. So the resource frontiers, they, it's, they're going to change as technology advances and we're more able to extract things that maybe we couldn't have done in the past and as conditions change. So as the sea ice melts, places like the Arctic are going to become easier to, to work in. The question becomes, should we go and work in those areas? So as I, I mentioned, um, technological advances are going to be really important, even for existing deposits. So mines that we're already extracting from, we're getting much better at actually separating out the metal rich rocks from the waste material and making sure that we process them much more effectively so we can get out as much copper as possible. And by doing that, we reduce the amount of waste that's left over. So the tailings piles that we have to then deal with are much, much smaller. And we can, we're also doing much better at reducing the amount of energy that's required to do that processing. So there's lots of technological advances in our existing um, mining and extraction processes um, without even thinking about finding new deposits. But another big thing that mining companies are becoming much more aware of and that we are, is going to be really important in the future is thinking much more about how we close a mine when it's finished and how we restore the landscape when the mining has finished. And so we have to think about things like reprocessing the waste and recovering metals from it. So as I've said, some of those older tailings deposits, they probably weren't very efficient when those were generated at extracting all the copper, for example. So at the bottom of those tailings piles, there may actually be quite a bit of metal in there that's still of um, worth extracting. So there's now renewed efforts to maybe go back through some of those old waste piles and actually reprocess that material to get out more of the metals that are already in there. Um, so we need more um, 
funding needs to be put into these kind of restoration of existing uh, mines and figuring out how to actually re return the landscape back to its natural um, habitat as much as we possibly can. And we, we work closely with communities to make sure that everyone is involved in this and everyone's happy with the extraction that's going to take place. Of course, at the moment, mining is quite understandably focused on the continents. That's where it's accessible and we, un, we, can, we can map them, we, we can access most of them as long as we, you know, it's safe for us to do so. But in the future, there is a lot of discussion about whether or not we should start thinking about the seafloor. And I already talked about, for example, volcanogenic massive sulfide deposits, which form at spreading centers in, mid, in the mid-oceans. There's a lot of metal on the seafloor. And in some ways, there are advantages to mining the seafloor because we're not going to be affecting human populations by doing that. We're not going to be displacing communities or creating environmental issues and, and water issues on, on people's doorsteps. But on the other hand, there are potentially huge ramifications for sea life um, and environment, the environment on the, on the sea floor. And we have to think quite carefully about how we would do it uh, while minimizing the environmental impact. And so this is a, an ongoing discussion and an ongoing area of research to understand what metals are on the sea floor, how they might be extracted with the minimal environmental impact. And then the last thing I will just mention, which is probably a bit more of a throwaway thought, is the future of mining other planetary bodies or maybe asteroids. There's been a lot of talk about this. You, you think about SpaceX and Elon Musk's uh, vision of terraforming Mars. Um, there are metals out there in the solar system that we could potentially um, extract in the future, but we'd have to think very carefully about how we do it, go about doing that. How do we actually get the sorts of technologies that we need on Earth to not just extract, but process and, and actually bring those materials back? Or are we just thinking about processing them on another planet in order to, to, to live elsewhere. But that is something to consider for the future if we really are running out of resources on our own planet.